Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Um, and thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button to communicate with our panelists at any time. Both your microphone and camera are off, so our panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions being offered, so be sure to sign up for more. And then last but not least, this presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week at strivescan.com backslash Pennsylvania. And with that being said, I'll turn it over to our first presenter. So if Butler University could please join me. Hi, everyone. Just had to unmute myself there. Um, hi, everyone, and good evening. Um, I am super excited that you're here today to learn a little bit more about our institutions, but we're going to spend a few minutes talking about Butler University. My name is Sarah DiNardo, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission, um, DC-based uh, regional representative for the university, and I work with, uh, specifically with students in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeastern states. Butler is a private, non-religiously affiliated, mid-sized university located in the city limits of Indianapolis, Indiana. While we are located within those city limits, we are just about five miles north of downtown. Um, campus itself is actually located in a nice little residential neighborhood that gives students that true campus feel. And as you can see on the image on the screen, you can see the city skyline of Indianapolis right from our campus. We have just under 4,700 undergraduate students and around 500 graduate students. We see that about 55% of our students are now coming from out of state and Pennsylvania is one of those uh, big states for us here at Butler. We were founded as a liberal arts institution and that still serves as our educational foundation today with the average class size at 22 and the student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. You're going to find your classroom experience to be very student focused and engaging your professors will get to know you and you'll get to know your classmates really well through lots of discussions and group projects. We're known for providing real world experiences through internships research with faculty mentors performances and community engagement. Our size in many ways gives students that big school feel with those, um, or excuse me, gives you that small school feel with those big school opportunities. Switch those up a little bit today. As you can see here on this screen, we have six different academic colleges that focus in on communication, education, liberal arts and sciences, pharmacy and health sciences, and visual and performing arts, as well as business. For students who are unsure what they want to study, um, I encourage you to look into our exploratory studies program, which is for kind of those undecided or undeclared students. All students at Butler will start taking courses in their major during their first year, um, as well as taking classes in our core curriculum. Our core is kind of unique in the sense that we have an Indianapolis community requirement class. Students participate in a course where service in the community is actually integrated into the curriculum. While it's not a requirement for all students, about 75% of our students do complete at least one internship before they graduate. Many of our students taking advantage of our location in a major city um, for those internship experiences, um, but others will do things uh, through our internship programs, which we have in Washington, D.C. and New York City. Even though our students love campus and Indianapolis, about 40% of our students do spend at least one semester away studying abroad through our 200 programs in 60 different countries. Because of all these hands-on experiences, Butler students have had significant success after graduation as demonstrated by our 98% placement rate. As you can see in the center of the screen, we have BUB Well, which is our framework that and our foundation for a transformative and holistic Butler experience. We foster a positive environment that helps students develop both inside and outside the classroom through a, um, each of these eight dimensions, as you can see here on the screen. Butler is a residential college campus with a three year housing requirement and over the past five years we've built two new residence halls, a one for first year students and one for sophomores that really focus in on suite style living. We recently partnered with Bon Appetit as our dining vendor, and they focus in on sustainability and work with local farmers to provide healthy options for our students. And working with local farmers is something we love being in Indianapolis. We have over 130 clubs and student organizations and active Greek life with about 35% of our students participating and 20 division one athletic teams as part of the Big East Conference. We even have football as part of our Pioneer Football League. Students have access to free tickets and sporting events, including men's basketball, um, which is a pretty big deal on campus. And there's a number of club and intramural sports as well. 
Now I'm just going to quickly go over some uh, admission information for those of you who are juniors or uh, looking into admission for next year. Here's a quick glance of our academic profile, which gives you an idea of where a typical incoming first year student is academically speaking. These are middle 50% ranges. Please note that the GPA is weighted, so it's really like A's and B's on your transcript. And we are a test optional institution and will be test optional moving forward. So not just for this year, but for in the years to come as well. Quick list of all the items necessary for your application. We have our own app, but we're also a member of Common App. You can use either one to submit your application for admission. Um, it's usually just easier to submit Common App if you are applying to other Common App schools. There's no application fee to apply. It's completely free. And again, as I mentioned, we are a test optional institution. Lastly, just some important dates and deadlines for you juniors listening in. Our app will open on August 1st and you can get in there and get going. We have two timelines for admission, early action, non-binding, um, November 1st and regular decision, February 1st. Both EA and regular decision students are automatically reviewed for merit-based scholarships when they apply. Um, those range between about $15,000 and $22,000 a year. Our campus is open for visitors right now, so we would love to see you on campus. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, I'll drop my contact information in the chat. So feel free to reach out to me. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks a lot, Sarah, for talking to us about Butler University. Next up, we have Youngstown State University. Right. Hello, everybody. My name is Bill D'Amico. I'm an associate director here in the Office of Admissions at Youngstown State. And before I jump into the content of the presentation, I just want to show you a brief video on some engagement opportunities here at Youngstown State. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. All right, so for those of you who are not aware, Youngstown State University is classified as a mid-sized Division I urban research institution in beautiful Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, Ohio is right over the Ohio border from Pennsylvania. We're about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. So um, just to give you some overview real quick, we're nearly 12,000 students here at Youngstown State. So you're going to get a Division I feel to the university. There's, you know, all the extracurricular opportunities, 115 different programs that you want to study, student uh, experience opportunities, all the things you'd expect to find at a larger school. But at the same time, as you can see, your average class size is 26. So it's going to feel very similar to a high school size class where faculty is going to get to know you. You're going to get to know people in your classes. You're not going to be in those massive stadium seated classrooms where you're just in a sea of people. So you will get a big institution feel with a small class size. Here at Youngstown State University, there are three things that are going to make up your Y experience. First and foremost is academics. So as you can see, we have five different colleges within the university. And as I said before, 115 different programs. Some of the programs we're most known for is our ABET accredited engineering programs. Right now, our uh, engineering students are working on that projects with NASA and Boeing. They do all kinds of really great uh, internships and experiential learning tied in with that. We have a double ACSB uh, business program here at Youngstown State that puts us in the top 10% of business programs in the world. We actually have one of the oldest music programs in the country, the Dana School of Music. So if you are into performance, recording, composition, music education, we have everything that you're interested in there as well. Um, our health sciences. So we have a, a great Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. We have a full physical therapy program, respiratory therapy. Um, Forensic science is very popular, psychology. So as you can see, I mean, there really is something for everybody here at the university. And a really big part of no matter what program you go into is the research and experiential learning. So we really want you to not only learn the theory in your classroom, but you're gonna have so many different opportunities to practice that out in the field. Aside from majors, there's a lot of support services. So we don't just get you enrolled here at the university and hope to see you at the end of all this with a diploma. There's a lot of support. So you're going to have academic advisors that are going to make sure that you are advised, you know, obviously to complete your degree in four years. We have a current academic advising office, disability services. We offer free tutoring. So we really want to make sure that you are supported as a student here. 
Another big component to your education is going to be student life. So as I said before, we are a division one school for athletics. Um, we have Greek life. We have all sorts of different student activities, even student employment. So my point is really all of those are going to make up your why experience. And in general, I just want to let you know that college is going to be 100% of what you make of it. So take advantages of all the opportunities that you're going to have both in and outside the classroom. Okay, so aside from that, I wanna talk about uh, your cost of education. So not only does Youngstown State University have tons of really great academic programs, but we really pride ourselves on affordability. So there's two different tuition categories. We have the students in Western Pennsylvania, you're in the, the gold affordable tuition advantage area. And then if you're in Eastern Pennsylvania, you're in the blue, but you can see that if you are actually in one of those 18 counties in Western Pennsylvania, you're only paying a $360 difference to an Ohio resident. So your full year of tuition is under $10,000 a year, total resident cost under 20. If you are actually in those blue uh, counties that were in Eastern Pennsylvania, there is a $6,000 out of state surcharge However, YSU has a ton of different scholarships out there. So you can see in front of you now, um, we have a bunch of different merit-based scholarships based on both a GPA and a test score, though we are also looking at test optional scholarship. But you'll also notice we have the Provo scholarship. So if you have a 3.0 GPA and either a 19 ACT or 990 SAT and you are in that blue out of state, that will actually waive up to $6,000 of that out of state surcharge. So we are extremely affordable. Oh, there's a zoom in on that just in case you want to take a closer look. All right, so I do want to kind of conclude here with just going through the application. We are still open for summer and fall applications. Priority deadline has passed, but we are still accepting scholarships all the way till August 1st. We are not on the Common App. We have an institutional app here at Youngstown State University. I promise it will take you five minutes. So in addition to the application, we just need your transcripts. And as I said before, if you've taken the ACT or SAT, we'll require that as well. We are also open for campus visits. Um, please come check us out. Campus is beautiful. We also have all sorts of virtual options as well. Come check us out. That's a huge part of this experience. And if you have any other questions, I will put my information in the chat, but we're here to help you. Just let me know. Thank you so much, Bill. Next up, we have DigiPin Institute of Technology. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. Hey there. Yeah, my name is Alec Liebson. I am an admissions outreach coordinator at DigiPen Institute of Technology. Oh, and my video disappeared. Oh, you stopped my video, it says. Sorry about that. Let me get no back. There we go. Great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so I'm an admissions outreach coordinator at DigiPen Institute of Technology, um, which I'm going to talk about. Um, so we are a West Coast school. So uh, might be a big leap for you, but I'm going to tell you all the great reasons why it is totally worth that leap. Um, so DigiPen is, was founded in 1988 uh, by Mr. Claude Comer. Um, Claude Comer is actually the founder of, uh, co-founder of Nintendo Software Technology. So that is the branch, the America branch of Nintendo, um, which creates the hardware and does a lot of the localization for the U.S. Um, so his knowledge uh, as the co-founder of that company really in started what DigiPen is all about, which is preparing people for these four industries down here, and especially that game development industry. Um, so we founded in 1988 and then uh, landed in Redmond, Washington in 1998, um, which is a hub for game development and for technology in general. Uh, we have actually over 350 game development companies in a 25 mile radius of us. So this is actually the number one place in the US to work in the game industry and then only second in the world to Tokyo, Japan. Um, and we're only about 16 miles east of Seattle. So really accessible to the more kind of urban downtown areas and, and city vibes, but also um, kind of nice to be studying in a more suburban area, um, a bit quieter, a bit um, more accessible. Um, we are actually, the reason why we're in Redmond is because of, that's where a lot of these companies are um, and that they're all there because Microsoft actually started in Redmond, Washington. So that's kind of magnetized and drew everyone to that area. So we have about 1200 students. So we're definitely a, a smaller school because of what we're offering. We're offering such specific programs that we really want our faculty and students dedicated to these specific areas of study. Um, but the really cool fact of that is that, you know, 45% are, are not Washington State students. So, you know, 30% out of state um, and then 15% international. So 
as you can see, a lot of people see the opportunities that both studying and then going on to work in Redmond, Washington offers them um, and, and choose DigiPen because of how well known we are in the industry. Yeah, so just a small sampling of some of the, the companies in our area. You know, you have Nintendo, Valve, Bungie. Um, probably one of your favorite companies is, is near us. Uh, I can kind of guarantee that. Um, you know, Oculus is actually shares a parking lot with us. So pretty cool to, to see their development and, and be so connected to them and have graduates working there. Um, and we have graduates working at, on, basically they've shipped over a thousand different game titles. So our graduates have had a hand in a thousand different games. So I can, again, almost guarantee you've played multiple games if you're a gamer um, that our graduates have worked on. So, so it's exciting for us to, to talk about their successes and, and all their cool stories. Um, we have lots of great articles on our website highlighting their success. Uh, so just want to highlight a couple of our, our kind of cornerstone achievements. Um, so we're always in the past 10 years ranked in the top five game design schools by the Princeton Review. Um, it's a really important achievement to us because I know a lot of students use that to find schools that fit their degree program of choice. Um, so our degree programs have landed on that. Um, and we really, really like our, our size. You know, we have about 11 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of 20. Um, with this degree, the degrees you're getting here, hands-on and personalized approach to education is super important. So um, being in a small program really, really makes our students excel. Um, yeah, and then our, our students win tons of awards. They win game awards, so they compete at the in Independent Games Festival and have over 60 awards. Um, and then our, we have student short films. So our animation students um, work on animated short films. And we have over 250 uh, animated short film awards from film festivals. Here's our degree programs. Uh, I won't go too deep into that because uh, I can always follow up and, and talk with you. Or if you have questions about a specific one, feel free to drop that in the Q&A. Um, but the kind of division to think about is computer science, um, game design and development, and then art and animation and music and sound design. Um, most people kind of have a rough idea of where they're landing, but game design is something I want to briefly talk about just because it's really the cornerstone of kind of a lot of people's decisions when they want to go into the game industry. So we have a Bachelor of Arts in Game Design, which is humanities-based and really focused on user experience, player experience, and psychology. So this is for people that are writers, world builders, um, level designers, um, using that creative mind, but not necessarily doing the art and 3D modeling. Um, then we have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Game Design, which is basically a combo of a programming degree and then about 25% or so of that more humanities-based courses. So it's kind of a best of both worlds, um, but first and foremost, a programming degree. And then our computer science degrees are all focused on programming um, for games and just the general technology industry. Um, and our artists are 3D modelers for games and film. Then lastly, our music programs really focus on creating sound design and scores for games, film, um, anything that needs sound and sound effects. So it's both technical, but also, you know, you're learning music theory, you're writing scores, you're still practicing your instrument. Um, so lots of cool, cool ways to pursue that degree and kind of get a niche experience that leads directly to the industry. We're very project-based. So if you go on our website and I'll post maybe a link in the chat, um, all our students starting in their second year complete game projects or animated film projects. Um, those are really what build out your portfolio and your resume and, and land you that dream job. You know, is that portfolio and, and actual experience on a project. Um, if you play, if you have Steam, then just give a search for DigiPen Institute of Technology. You'll see all our student games. Um, we actually have one that's been in the top 10 on Steam for the past couple of weeks, which is super exciting, and they're all free to download. Um, real quick, I'm going to wrap with a quick uh, sizzle reel just to show you a little bit better um, what we're all about. It's about 30 seconds. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Alec. Um, next up, we have Aldelfi University. 
Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Alana Dawson. I am one of the, admiss the admissions uh, directors at Adelphi University. So we are a medium-sized liberal arts university located in Garden City, Long Island, New York. So we are very close to both JFK and LaGuardia airports, as well as the city. So it's really easy to get to our campus. If anyone is in Long Island, feel free to come by and visit us. Across our majors, our average class size is 21 and our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. We pride ourselves in making sure that we have a personalized touch to each of our students' education. And having such a small and intimate classroom environment will allow you to feel more confident in raising your hand, um, being able to have better conversations with your professors, which can also lead to better letters of recommendation, internship and job opportunities. We do have students that represent 64 countries and 43 states. It's really important for us to make sure that our um, students represent students of different backgrounds, orientations, disabilities, religions, et cetera. And so we do our absolute best to make sure that we are bringing in students from various backgrounds. I do sit on our diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. So it's really interesting to see the different initiatives and action steps that we have in place. So as I mentioned, we are a liberal arts school. So the first two years, all students take what we call general education requirement courses. The really cool thing about that is that we do allow students to come in undecided so that that way you're taking those gen ed courses. And then at the end of two years or 60 credits, you'll then declare your major. And on the other end of that, say if you do start in one area and you're not quite sure what you wanna major in, um, if you do start, I'm sorry, you start with a major and then you decide you want to change, it's very easy to switch your major within the first two years. So our College of Arts and Sciences offers a broad variety of majors for students, ranging from performing arts programs, criminal justice, um, biology, physics, etc. With our College of Education and Health Sciences, we do have our Scholar Teacher Education Program, or STEP for short, where students can major in a core content area, such as English, history, or mathematics, and then begin to take classes for your master's degree in your junior year. So you, earn, so you will earn both your bachelor's and your master's in five years. Our College of Nursing is very hands-on and it is direct entry, meaning that you can apply as a nursing major. And if you are accepted, day one, you are a nursing major. Our School of Psychology also offers an accelerated program in general psychology, where you would get your bachelor's and your master's in general psych. We also have various concentrations to choose from. And then we have our Robert B. Williamstad School of Business. Our School of Business is AACSB accredited, meaning that we are in the top percentage of business schools. We offer marketing, management, accounting, economics, finance, and business undecided for students who know that they want to get into business, but they're not quite sure which area they want to start off with. And then if you are interested in working in the helping field and working at an adoption agency or being a social worker at um, a school or a hospital, I would highly recommend our School of Social Work. It is a dedicated School of Social Work and we do have several um, connections with local organizations for students to have the opportunity to gain, to gain their clinical hours. Under our signature programs, we have our honors college for students who are really looking for an added academic challenge once you get to college. This is cohort style, so students live together, eat together, take their classes together, and it really just adds to your overall college experience. The Levermore Global Scholars Program is for students who are really interested in social justice or social awareness. If you are a member of Model UN, for example, in high school and you really enjoy that club, this is definitely a program for you. And then we have other four plus one programs where students can earn their bachelor's and their master's in more time. So we have one for education, computer science, exercise science, and more. Bridges to Adelphi is a fee-based program where we provide um, social, vocational, and academic support for students. And we also have our learning resource program. I'm sorry, Bridges to Adelphi is for students who are on the spectrum of autism. And our learning resource program is for students who have ADHD or any other learning based, um, language based learning disability. If students do need certain accommodations, you can absolutely provide your documentation to the Student Access Office, and we will do our best to meet those accommodations for you. This is our joint degree program slide. So if you open up the camera app on your phone and hover over the QR code, this will bring up this page on our website. So students can start out at Adelphi for three to four years and then go on to one of these professional schools such as um, NYU Dental, Albany Law, SUNY Upstate, et cetera. 
Students are not limited to just these programs. You can really attend whichever professional school you would like, and you can, you'll still receive the same guidance from our Office of Pre-Professional Advising and Fellowship. So what makes Adelphi unique? We have a ton of different things for students to offer. We really pride ourselves in making sure that we have um, hands-on learning for our students, making sure that we have so many clubs and organizations. We do have over 80 for students to choose from. With us being so very close to the city, that leaves plenty of opportunities for students to have opportunities to hang out with their friends or even gain um, internship and career opportunities as well too. And of course, we have our Adelphi bunnies, which we love very much. These are pictures of our university center. It's really important to see that any university you are interested in is making those renovations and improving on their campus because that will then um, pour back into, your, into our students. And then lastly, if you are looking to apply, we do accept the Adelphi and the Common App application. We are test optional this year, but of course, if you do choose to submit your testing, um, that will, if you do or do not, that will not negatively impact any scholarship consideration. And we do have automatic scholarship consideration along with honors college, athletics, um, scholarships, performing arts, and more. I will put my direct contact information in the chat, but if you do have any questions, feel free to email us or call us at the front desk. And of course, follow us on social media. We do post often and we would love to interact with you. Thank you, Alana. Next up, we have Emory Riddle Aeronautic University. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us all to hear all about these great schools today. My name is Leanna Thompson. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about our campuses. So I work at the Daytona Beach, Florida campus, but we do have a Prescott, Arizona campus, and we have about 120 campuses worldwide. These are small satellite campuses, and you may have heard about that if you've done any of our dual enrollment programs. Today we're going to focus on the two residential campuses. So on the left hand side is going to be our Prescott, Arizona campus. So pretty much a historic kind of feel to it, a smaller campus with a population of about 3000 students on there. So you could probably walk to everything on campus within 10 minutes or so. And then on the right hand side is going to be Daytona Beach, a little bit larger, about double the size with a about under 7,000 students at the campus. Um, five miles from the beach in Daytona Beach, so sunny weather all year long. Actually, both campuses have great weather, so over 300 days of perfect weather at both campuses. And I'll tell you why that's important in a little bit. Um, a lot of things, a lot of reasons students are attracted to our school that are interested in maybe aviation or flight is because in Daytona Beach and Prescott, we are pretty close to the airport. In Daytona Beach, we are adjacent to the Daytona International Airport. So that's why you can see our fleet of planes there and the runway. So students can check into their flight building and walk right onto their planes. So some of our notable programs I'll share on the screen here is aeronautical science, and that's our professional pilot degree, and we'll talk a little bit more about that one. Aerospace engineering, we are number one in aerospace engineering. Um, we have astronomy and astrophysics, global security, intelligence studies, forensic biology and psychology, logistics, supply chain management, and more. Also aerospace physi physiology, which is like studying the effects that the body has while in space or flight. And you can see some of the photos on the side of some of our labs. We are very hands-on. So a little bit more about our flight program. Our flight is gonna be our most popular degree program followed by aerospace engineering. The reason students are attracted to that program is because we are qualified um, for the FAA to be an RATP. So that means that students can get to the airlines at a thousand hours instead of 1500 hours. So at our campuses, we have over 99 instructional aircrafts, over 134 simulators. So when I say hands-on training, I definitely, I definitely mean that that's something that Embry-Riddle prioritizes. So a little bit more about the campus, our average class size between both campuses is going to be 27 at Daytona Beach and 24 at Prescott. If you ask most of our students, they've never had a class size that big, but we do like to keep our class sizes small, especially as you get into your core classes. Our job placement rate is a 94%, so that is within graduating within a year or continuing on your education. So that means that you'll get a job within that first year of graduating or decide to continue on to a master's program, depending on the career field that you may wanna go into. And we have over 350 clubs and organizations on campus. 
a little bit more about the campus life and student life. We have study abroad opportunities. We, don't, we do have all four branches of the ROTC in Daytona Beach. We have over 20 fraternities and sororities on campus, and we are an NCAA Division II. So on average, our students between clubs, organizations, and campus life like this are involved in two to three, I would say, activities. Here are some of the top companies that um, hire Embry-Riddle graduates. So on the aviation side, we have a lot of the major airlines on there. On the engineering side, we have a lot of the top engineering companies. Also, you'll see some financing, business relations, because we do have more than just aviation and engineering. So a little bit about the application process. Unfortunately, we are not on Common App or anything like that. You would have to go to our website directly, which is erau.edu backslash apply. There is a $50 application fee, but I'm happy to supply you with the waiver code, which is on the screen, DBPC, if you'd like to submit an application. We do have rolling admissions. So if you're currently a senior and you're interested in applying, you still have a little bit of time. If you are looking for next year, if you're gonna be a, if you're gonna be a rising senior over the summer, our application window will open over the summer. All we need to get the process started is gonna be a transcript from you showing your ninth through 11th grade courses and everything else is gonna be highly recommended but optional. Um, so we are tests optional as well. So if you take the SAT or ACT and you feel like that represents yourself, you can submit that. If not, um, you can go test optional. Two letters of recommendation are highly encouraged, one from like a science or a math teacher, and then maybe if you're already flight training, maybe your flight instructor, or maybe you're an ROTC or something like that from somebody who doesn't know you or somebody's not related to you, shall I say. Um, in essay, we don't have any type of template or anything like that. So anything you want to write about and share, some people have visited the campus and share about that. Some people write about their parents, maybe being an engineer or being a flight instructor or something like that. Um, and then an academic resume. So if you're a student that's involved in a lot of extra activities, I always say put that together on an academic resume to show us a little better preview of the student that you are. Over 90% of our students do receive financial aid and funding. So the first thing is as long as you have at least a 3.0, you will get reviewed for merit-based scholarship. Um, also submitting the FAFSA so we can see what you qualify that way. And then there's extra opportunities for funding and scholarships. We do have working on campus as an option. Some of the clubs and organizations on campus that you join may also provide additional funding. So here's my contact information on the screen. I'll also drop it in the chat. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Thank you. Thank you. And so we're going to wrap up um, our presentation with Susquim Hana, excuse me. Suske Ohana University. So thanks guys. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm Assistant Director of Admission at Susquehanna University. Um, Susquehanna is located in Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania. We are about um, 45 minutes north of Harrisburg, um, if you're familiar with, um, with where that is. Um, if you have visited campus, um, that first image that you saw is, is like an overview of, of some of our academic buildings. Um, we are a small private liberal, liberal arts college. Um, so our student to faculty ratio will be about 13 to one, um, makes our average class size about 20, um, 28 students in a class or 18 students in a class, I'm sorry. Um, we also cap our labs at 14 students. So if you're somebody who's interested in the sciences, all of your lab courses will be um, a little bit on the smaller side. Um, as a liberal arts college, we offer courses in our Sigma Mai School of Business, um, our music, um, School of Music, and our School of Arts and Sciences as well. Um, so 100 plus majors, minors, and programs there. Um, with our smaller class sizes as a liberal arts institution, you will be taking courses inside and outside of your major. So you'll get a really well-rounded education in that way, um, taking courses not just in your, your main program of study. Um, and because of your smaller class sizes, all of your courses will be really hands-on. So here's just an example of what a typical lab class might be like at Susquehanna. Um, we get our name from um, our location and our proximity to the Susquehanna River. So this is just what like a typical stream ecology class might look like, um, you know, being in the river with your waders on collecting samples um, to take back to the lab. 
Um, one unique thing about Susquehanna is that 100% of our students will study away from campus at some point before graduation. Um, this is called our Global Opportunities Program, or we call it GO for short. Um, so if you attend Susquehanna, um, and you're interested in study abroad, you will have that opportunity. Um, this is an academic program that's actually built into our curriculum. And you can do this one of three ways. You can either do what's called a go long program where you're studying for a full semester um, at another international university and taking a full course load there. And then all of those courses will then transfer back to Susquehanna. Um, or you can do what's called a go short program, which is for shorter length of time. You can do two to six weeks um, over either our summer or our winter break um, in more of a group led trip where you're doing like a service opportunity um, in another country. And then our third opportunity is what's called go your way, where you're essentially designing your own trip, um, pretty much anywhere where you'd like to go. That would be some sort of cross cultural experience for you. Um, students have designed their own internship opportunities. They've done a multitude of different things. Right now we do have over 150 different active clubs and organizations on campus. All of our students are living on campus all four years. We guarantee that housing for you. So we do really have an active student life on campus all throughout the weekend on the weekends. Um, we have special interest clubs, Greek life. Um, about 25% of our student body is made up of student athletes. So um, we're a division three school in the landmark conference for most of our athletic teams. So if you're interested in athletics, um, you'd be good in good company there. Um, our football team plays in the Centennial Conference. So that's the only team that, that is different um, within the, the conference that they play in. We also offer a lot of different um, intercollegiate club sports as well that are competitive, like our men's rugby team is currently eighth in the nation um, as a club team. So right now, 96% of our alumni are working full time or um, pursuing graduate school or, or advanced degrees within six months of graduation. Um, we're really proud of where our um, alumni are, are headed after graduation. So we have a, a one main resource on campus that, that can really help students get to this, this main goal post-graduation, which is our Career Development Center. Um, this is a great resource on campus that connects our students to our alumni network. Um, and we have a lot of different alumni networking events throughout the year um, that connects our students to our alumni where one is called Breakthrough, where we bring hundreds of alumni back to campus um, for different panel sessions and something called um, speed networking, which is kind of like speed dating, but um, where you get to meet with alumni um, for, for 15 minutes or so, and then you switch and, and meet a few others. And then we also have career trek opportunities where you shadow some of our alumni in their place of work in different cities throughout the East Coast for, for a day. Okay, so I do want to go over some of our application requirements. Um, we're on the common application. We also have our own application. Other things that we'll need for your application are your high school transcript, um, your SAT or ACT scores. Um, we're also test optional. So if you feel like your, you know, your transcript is a better representation of you academically, you don't have to submit those test scores. We'll need um, one letter of recommendation um, from a counselor or a teacher. You're welcome to submit more than one if you want to. Um, a personal essay, just the one essay that is required in the application. And then just by applying to Susquehanna, we automatically consider you for merit scholarship awards right now up to $38,000 a year. Okay, so I'll also um, drop my information in the chat as well. We're open for campus visits too. If you, um, you know, are in a position where you can come visit campus, so we'd love to see you there. Thank you, Sarah. So, folks, that brings us to the end of our um, presentations. So now we're going to move into a uh, Q and A session. And before we get started, I do want to mention that if uh, our audience has any questions for our panelists. The Q&A feature is a great way for you to get in touch with them and ask those questions. So as we're going through this discussion, I encourage you to ask your own questions as well. And I'll welcome back our first school, which was Butler University. And the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? 
Great, thanks so much. So my big piece of advice is for you students listening in um, to set aside some time, um, you know, maybe weekly or biweekly, depending on where you are in the process to chat about college with the adults helping you in your life, kind of outside of the house or outside of those dinnertime conversations. So obviously with COVID, it's hard to go out and get a coffee or get a bite to eat with those folks. But if you can talk about college outside of the house so that when you come home from school or you, you know, are sitting down with your family or those adults helping you, you're not they're not nagging you you don't feel like um, you're always constantly talking about college so dedicate that specific time um, throughout the week to sit down and chat with with those folks so that you can um, have have a plan moving forward so that's my biggest piece of advice thank you sarah next up we have youngstown state university there's really three pieces of advice I usually give students in the college search process. The first is if you know what you want to study, obviously find a school that has that major. And maybe if you're undetermined, find a, a school that has a lot of different programs so that you have a lot to explore. The second piece of advice I'd say is campus fit is really important. So I always recommend students get on as many college campuses as you can. They're all going to be different. They're all going to have a different feel. You got, you got to like where you go to school. And then the third piece of advice is cost. Cost is really important. The last thing you want to do is bear yourself in a ton of debt. So, you know, look into what schools cost, apply to as many scholarships as you can, work with the people in their financial aid offices, know that we're all competing for you and make sure that you get a great deal. Thank you, Bill. Next up, we have DigiPen Institute of Technology. Yeah, really great advice so far. Totally agree with, especially looking for, for scholarships and third-party scholarships and just find as much free money as you can. I um, also recommend trying to speak with a current student in the program you're most interested in at the school. Um, if you can talk to a current student and hear what the program's like, things they like about the program, things they don't like about the program um, and the school in general, that's, that's a great way to hear it directly from someone who's currently attending and give you a better picture of what it feels like um, in addition to admissions counselors views and in the school's materials. Awesome, thank you, Alec. Next up, we have Adelphi um, University. Okay, so the first thing that I would advise people to, or students to have is a professional email address or one that is specific for the application process. So whether it's your name and apply at Gmail, if it's your full name, et cetera, just make sure that, is, that it is a professional email address and that that way you know that you'll access that email address and everything there is for the college application process. I also recommend that you remain organized, whether it's different folders, um, whether it's like a folder that you, a physical folder that you have, something that's in your email, that you're having conversations like Sarah said, and to make sure that you're remaining open because college is a time for you to experience people that you wouldn't experience on a day-to-day -day basis. You're gonna be in a new environment. So really be open and really make sure that you are embracing this process because you won't, you won't get to do it again. Thank you, Alana. And I can't say how often I've heard that um, suggestion of an email separately for college. So thank you for bringing that up. Next up, we have Emory uh, Riddle Aeronautic University. Thank you. My advice for somebody going through the college search is reaching out to those universities once you start to narrow it down and talk to those college representatives, those admissions counselors, or those students that are answering the phone. And and ask those questions that you may have. Hey, what are the admissions requirements? What should I be taking my senior year? Or if you're a sophomore, even better, what should I take my junior and senior year? Um, and then if you have the opportunity, maybe your family's vacationing in an area or something, knock out some more of those tours for some of those campuses while you can. Thank you, Liana. Um, next up, we have Susquehanna uh, University. Yeah, so my advice for um, students going through the college search process is really just to own your college search, um, you know, take in all the great advice you get from family and teachers and, and counselors and, and maybe friends, but um, don't necessarily rely on them to do all of the legwork for you or, or take only their advice. Uh, make sure you're choosing um, your home for the next four years and, and choose a place where you think that, that you will, will thrive. Thank you, Sarah. So we're running low on time, but I definitely want to get to this question and thank you to our panelists for all the great advice that you shared with us, um, which is more of a fun question about culture life on campus and what students are going to expect. So we'll go in the same order um, with Butler University. And can you share with us, what is your favorite event or tradition that happens on campus? 
Absolutely. We have a handful of fountains on campus that students aren't really supposed to go into, but um, during your senior year, students try to jump in all of the fountains across campus, including the one inside the library. <laughs> Super fun. Thank you, Sarah. Um, next up, we have Youngstown State University. Uh, my favorite event or tradition on campus is homecoming. Homecoming is really, really fun. There's a homecoming parade, there's homecoming court, there's all kinds of really fun activities leading up to that week. There's just a, a immense amount of school pride. So as a student, that was always something that I really look forward to. Thanks, Bill. Next up is DigiPen Institute of Technology. Yeah, um, after finals, the students have a uh, all night gaming party on campus. So they stay up all night and we give them food and snacks and, and fun stuff like that. And um, just kind of everyone is relieved after finals and has a breath of fresh air to, to play their favorite games all together. Thanks, Alec. Next up is Adelphi University. So if anyone is familiar with the classic Mean Girls, um, and on Wednesdays, they wear pink. Well, at Adelphi on Wednesdays, we wear brown and gold. So I love coming on campus on Wednesdays and just seeing everyone, faculty, staff, students in their uh, school colors. Thanks, Alana. Next up is Emory Riddle Internetic University. Awesome. Well, Bill took mine. Mine's definitely home, uh, homecoming too. But besides that, we also I also enjoy when all of the clubs and organizations set up tents. I mean, they're blasting music, just trying to get students involved in their clubs and organizations. And that's a great time for freshmen to get involved. Thank you, Liana. Um, and last up is going to be Susquehanna University. Um, so my favorite, excuse me, tradition is our annual Thanksgiving dinner. So this is right before students go home for their, their Thanksgiving uh, meal with their um, real family. We have a big Thanksgiving dinner in our dining hall with our, with our campus community and our faculty and staff members actually serve our students a kind of traditional Thanksgiving meal. Um, and you know our president will carve a turkey on your table and then at the end of the meal, we bag up all of the leftovers in Ziploc bags and students take the food back to their, their dorm room. So that's a lot of fun. Sounds so delicious. Thank you, Sarah. And that brings us to the end, folks. Um, so I do want to take a second and say thank you to our panelists. First of all, y'all did a great job. And thank you for sharing all the fantastic things about your school um, and our audience for being here and just listening about the options that you have looking forward to. Um, closing thoughts, whenever you close this window, um, there's going to be a very quick four question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback that you could provide. As I mentioned before, there's more sessions to be offered. So be sure to sign up for more. Um, and in about a week, you can access the same recording as drivescan.com uh, backslash Pennsylvania. Thank you, everybody, and have a great evening.